Now, speaking of the James Webb Space Telescope, since we filmed the rest of the section, it's actually been launched and obtained its first few pictures. And so, look, it's, they've so been... you have an excuse to put them in, right? I know, you kind of have to, right? And look, they are breathtaking. Um, the created nebula, you see uh, lots of detail of star formation, and we explore and the stars course. Uh, and by looking in those infrared colors, we can see stars that were previously uh, invisible to Hubble. Lots of detail, lots of pretty pictures. What's not to like? Indeed, it's very beautiful. And, you know, when we see all of these nebula, we, I start to, you know, we think, hey, there's a lot of detail uh, in this nebula. Or look at all the stuff that we can see in these galaxies and these stars. Uh, and, and what was the um, centerpiece of the first image, this cluster of galaxies, where you can see some of these lens galaxies that are tens of billions, about 13 billion years away. And I think everyone was excited by it, but I think it's a good point to talk about because this is the James Webb Telescope, really powerful, we're seeing things really far away, but it still suffers from the same problem that we have with Earth's observation telescopes, and that is when you're looking at things really, really far away, there is going to be a limit to what you can see. Yeah, but if we look at the, and these images were chosen to showcase it, but let's look at something a bit closer to home, like Jupiter. And it, this was imaged by Jupiter, it was at 2.2 uh, uh, microns. Imaged by the James Webb Space Telescope. Exactly, yeah. and this was one of their calibration images that they see, because a lot of people think, hey, is James Webb going to look at the solar system because it's such a big, powerful telescope, won't it be too bright? Well, the answer is no, things are still really far away, even our own solar system. Okay, so it's a pretty good image. I mean, you can see great red spot, weather bands, but it doesn't really match some of the ones we talked about in the planet section, of course, that were actually taken by, like, Juno, or the orbiters directly orbiting it. Exactly. You know, those orbiters are hundreds of thousands of kilometers above the surface. The James Webb Space Telescope is about 665 million kilometers away. So even though the telescope is much bigger than those orbiters, it is much, much further away. So if we put this in a scale, the Great Red Spot is about 16 or so thousand kilometers away. And at 665 million kilometers, looking in the two uh, micron range, that means we can only see features at about 400 kilometers. So we can clearly make out the Great Red Spot, that's great. But even on a giant planet like Jupiter, in our solar system, we're still talking about hundreds of kilometers as the smallest thing that we can make out. Yeah, so we can see this is a, presumably the shadow of one of the moons. That's right. Um, and the moons are a couple of thousand kilometers across, so that means they're going to be five or six pixels across. And that's about right. Yeah, but you're not going to be seeing craters on the moons. You're not going to be seeing craters on the moon. You're not going to be seeing the flag on the moon. And, and this is, again, this is our solar system. So when we look at Alpha Centauri at four light years away, the resolution is also going to be much worse, so you're not going to see details on that star. And so I think this is the thing, whether you're looking outward or downward, the limits of optics are the same. And there's only so much you can do and so much you can see. 